This is the Italian Real Estate Podcast, here to help you with the ins and outs and basics of Italian real estate presented by ItalianRealEstateLawyers.com. Hello there and welcome to another edition of the Italian Real Estate Podcast presented, of course, by ItalianRealEstateLawyers.com. We are back at it again with Italian attorney Marco Permunian. How are you doing, man? Good, how are you? I am doing well, thank you. And today... We wanted to do a little bit of a maybe slightly more informal conversational episode and start a series here uh, in this podcast talking about some of the places that we would consider living in and consider looking at in Italy. And we wanted to talk about living by the water, living in the countryside and living in the city. What are some of the places that we might consider um, or even maybe we should do an episode as well on small towns. But in this episode specifically, we wanted to talk about living by the water and some of the places that we might consider within Italy that would be of interest to each of us because we have our own tastes and reasons why we might pick certain places. But Marco, I know you happen to be a very big fan of a particular area Maybe do you want to talk about where it is that you might consider purchasing a home if you were to purchase a home by the water? As you know, I am a fan of a particular area which is very close to where I live in Italy, uh, which is not uh, an area by the sea, but since we're talking about where I would purchase a property by the water, I think a lake qualifies to and agree. <laughs> the area where I would purchase is uh, I would purchase a house which I'm actually looking into um, in the area of the lake Carda it's one of the lakes that we have in Italy in northern Italy which is kind of the lakes area it's probably not the most known lake in America right. because there are more famous lakes, like the Lake Maggiore or Lake Como, where right. even a lot of American actors purchased their homes or villas. Right, I George Clooney on Como, or at least he used to be there. I believe other actors followed him yeah, and yeah. purchased properties, yeah, yeah. I'm, if I'm not mistaken. I'm sure you're right about that. Well, I don't have the same budget, but... Uh, <laughs> one day, one day. <laughs> one day. But yeah, even if it's less known, I would definitely purchase a property in the Lake Garda. Um, it's it's very known actually in Europe, it's specifically in Germany. A lot of people from Germany purchase properties in the Lake Garda or in the vicinity. Um, it's a very nice area. Houses are, or villas or apartments are very expensive in comparison to other areas of Italy. And... I want to say that we're almost reaching the level of the most, the other most known uh, lake, which would be the Lake uh, Como, because prices in the lake area uh, region are really almost skyrocketing. Yeah. Uh, there are no properties anymore for sale, meaning a lot of properties are purchased within weeks from when they are uh, put for sale, and therefore prices are very high, especially on the right side of the lake, um, which is where people normally want to purchase because it's uh, there are mountains, but not mountains that go straight into the lake mm -hmm. uh, as it is on the left side of the lake, which is the one um, that is on the Lo Lombardy region. And what I would purchase is on the opposite side, the Veneto region. Mm. Um, I'm going to make fun of you because you're just a good old Veneto boy. Like... <laughs> You just gotta, you gotta stick, we gotta stick to your roots. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. We, we always say that uh, Italians in the citizenship podcast are very connected to the roots and I am too. So I would purchase in my region I don't and I'm you. lucky enough to have like one side of the lake in my region. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's a gorgeous place. I mean, even... Like when you go up on the train that goes, then takes you up to uh, Alto Adige, you don't see the lake, but you get the feeling of what that area is like. And just even on the other side of the mountains, but once you get over to the lakeside, my goodness. And it's, it's a, it's also, it's supposed to be, I believe one of the parts of Italy with some of the 
longest living people and even some of the longest living people on earth if i'm not mistaken and it's partially due to um something that they that, that that's grown in naturally in the area i, I want to say it's something like chlorella uh, I, I don't remember exactly but um it's a very healthy area to live in and it's a beautiful part of the country and then also i mean just not even to 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 discount what the lake itself has to offer it's a beautiful uh, glacial lake if i'm correct me if i'm wrong but either way it's a it's a huge massive lake and they do a lot of water sports on it you can go sailing on the lake i know plenty of people who do that um and and all types of water sports that are out there um but if you were to consider maybe a specific area are you looking more at kind of the like a maybe closer to one of the towns larger towns there or are you looking more at maybe like a smaller village that's on the Veneto side? So the way it works is the southern part of the lake, the Lake Garda, is um, very touristy. So a lot of tourists, a lot of noise and confusion on the weekends, uh, people with that ride bikes right. or people with their uh, convertible cars. That, um, the Lamborghinis but, and Ferraris. <laughs> yes, <laughs> But it's 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 the the whole region of the lake. The whole area of the lake is very beautiful, but the southern part of the lake is very noisy. And so I tend to like the part that is uh, not the most southern part, but like on the side, on the right, right side of the lake, uh, not too uh, north, because if you go very north, you go into another region, which is uh, Trentino Alto Adige, and I know you live there. And uh, there are a lot of mountains. Yeah. It's a little bit colder and cooler uh, because of the mountains. So the right side of the lake is the part that I would consider, even if, don't get me wrong, it's all beautiful. The it's left gorgeous. side of the lake, it, it's also beautiful. Um, so um, I would definitely consider any side of the lake if I found the right property. But if I had the option to choose, that's where I would focus. Of course, that's also the area that is more expensive. And man, we're really uh, reaching very high prices. Like we're talking about like four, six, seven thousand per square meters, and even more, ten thousand. Ouch! That is um, painful. It's very, very. It's getting very, very expensive. And of course, that's what happens when there is a low amount of properties available uh, because there's a huge interest, especially from foreigners right. and it's crazy when you go there uh, I, I went there to visit a few times and you what you hear is a lot of people speaking German right so uh, I want to say that there are more Germans there uh, than Italians but it's of course it's, that's just an assumption but really a lot of people from Germany are residing in the lake area yeah. um, in the Lake Garda area yeah no and and that actually ends up being for a very good reason is because of course, so, uh, south of Germany, it ends up being a lot warmer once you cross over the Alps. And it's one of the closest points to be able to have like a nice, wonderful getaway. And if you're coming from, say, Munich or even in Austria, in um, Innsbruck, it's a straight shot down. Like you just you get on the highway and you drive and it's a few hours maximum to get there. I mean, you have uh, just the highway that goes it, it, like I was saying from Munich and then it goes through Innsbruck, then it goes down to Bolzano, and then all of a sudden you're at the lakes. I mean, even goes down right to Verona. So you're not like far away from a lot of different major highways and major train lines. Uh, I mean, even if you're down in the southern park, part of that lake anyway, just you have a very easy time to get to Verona, Venice, uh, Padova, even Milan to get to the airports. Like you have a lot of different options for really great connections in this part of the country. But again, this very much does um, cater towards the 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 German speaking market, but if, for example, you look at like um, Lago uh, Maggiore, I love Lago Maggiore. It is gorgeous, especially the islands you can go to. Uh, was it Stresa and Isola Bella, Isola Piccola? I don't I don't remember the exact name of the other one. Um, but over there, you hear a lot more French because it's a lot closer to France. And so you end up uh, in these different areas. And then even uh, Como, because it's a little bit closer to the airports, uh, 
you end up almost seeming to hear a little bit more English spoken there. And each of the different markets seems to know about one of the lakes a little bit better than the others, interestingly. But, and then even when you get to the top, the, 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 the tippity top up in, in uh, Trentino, uh, what's the name? Something, uh, not Desenzano, Desenzano's on the, 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 the Lombardy side, but the, the top, the, 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 the fur farthest northern point. Do you, what's the name of that town up there? Yeah, in Lake Garda, it's the city there. It's called uh, Riva del Garda. Riva, that's what it is. Riva, Riva del Garda. You have a lot of Germans up there, just German speakers, native, that are from Italy, born in Italy, and that's their language. And you even start getting a bit more of a German feel to the architecture and everything up there. So it is interesting that you do have that connection even at the southern tip. And you can take a boat from the south to the north and it's what, like a couple of hours. But just because we are on the topic, actually, we're focusing a lot on lakes. We're, maybe what we should do is that we should do and keep this episode specifically on the lakes because that's a huge topic in and of itself right there. And then a future episode, we'll talk about going more to the seaside. But on this topic, are there any peculiarities about purchasing property on a lake here in Italy that somebody should keep in mind? Um, are there any restrictions on the properties or uh, on ownership or what you can do with the property or how the property can be developed? I'm glad you asked that because that's exactly the case. So uh, the way it works is you normally purchase a property around a lake of course, you want to get a property with lake view. Of course. <laughs> um, and the value of the property will be probably 10 times mm -hmm. if it has the lake view as at its normal, uh, as opposed to a property maybe that is in the vicinity of the lake, but without lake view. But um, anyway, what you normally want is you want to purchase a property from which you can uh, see the lake. And the property will be located in a town um, around the lake. And specifically regarding the Lake Garda that I'm very familiar with, uh, there are probably, I don't know, I want to say 30 towns around the Lake Garda, which are a proper municipality. So mm -hmm. uh, they have their uh, local government and uh, different rules. So depending on the town in which the property is located um, you will like different rules will apply but normally they all have in common the fact that it's you have to respect like very strict rules right. for example you have to request special permissions to expand the house or build another floor sometimes building another floor is not allowed if it covers the view of a house behind or there are even rules regarding the like how the house needs to be, um, like the style of the house if you want to maybe renovate a house or build a house, uh, because it needs to be aligned with the style of the other houses. Mm -hmm. And even olive trees, you know, it's an area where uh, there are a lot of olive trees and they make like spectacular olive oil. Ooh, yes, um, yes. And you can't even cut the trees sometimes in a way that is not allowed by the local government of the town. Uh, so you have to be very uh, respectful of the rules. I think it's fair, you know, it's a very uh, nice and cute area. Yeah. It's a limited area. So uh, there, there is only a certain number of houses that you can build or remodel. So yeah. I think it's appropriate that there are very specific rules to safeguard the environment and you know, the style of the properties and what you can do with your properties. Uh, nothing crazy, of course, as long as you respect the rules. I mean, a lot of people are renovating the properties. Uh, they are, are building uh, houses or buying houses that need renovation. There are a lot of hold houses that you can buy and renovate. Right. Um, so as long as you respect the rules, you'll be fine. But there are more rules than there are in other areas of Italy uh, where you can be more uh, free in terms of renovation or building or uh, expanding your property. Mm -hmm. I would assume also by, uh, by Riva del Garda, especially where it's more, you have a lot more happening in the Germanic style, that they really want to make sure that they preserve what things look like. And that's part of the reason for those rules, because I mean, part of the reason why people go to this area is because it's beautiful. And there are reasons why it's beautiful. It's because certain aspects of it look a certain way and are maintained. Um, I mean, even 
the the lake itself it's it's very protected like what you can do and how you can use it and in which ways i mean yeah granted you could go for a swim um but also yeah they are doing things even for the public to develop like they have now the walkway that goes around that's it's on the face of a the side of a cliff um or sometimes on top of a, a cliff itself but that's really interesting about these protections um if a person maybe were to be purchasing a property in this area, are the property taxes any different than what you might expect to find in other parts of the country? Because I know in some parts of the country, they can actually be quite low, but because this area is so in demand, do they charge higher property taxes or how does that work? No, I wouldn't say that. I would say the, the property taxes are not affected by uh, these specific rules that you have to respect. So. I don't believe that it's more expensive in terms of taxes uh, if you purchase in the Lake Garda area. The property itself will be way more expensive right. uh, than a property that you could buy in another normal area in Italy, and there will be a lot more rules. But I wouldn't say that the taxes are high. Um, but I, I was I wanted to ask you. You mentioned that you uh, like. Uh, Lake Maggiore, yes. which I'm not very familiar with. So, um, and I wanted to ask you, like, why you um, you like that area specifically? If you've been there and if you had uh, experience with with that area, and 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 what do you like about that area? Yeah, actually, so for me, I think if I were to consider a lake, Maggiore might be the one for me. Como, I would almost say surely not. Um, I, and I'll before answering your, your question, I'll say the reason why I would have a difficult time considering Como. And that is partially due to the air quality there. And sometimes it seems as though they get the smog blown up from Milan. And because of how the mountains are, it seems to catch uh, the air, uh, the, the, the smog there. And so from that perspective, I'm not so crazy about it. As a Star Wars fan, though, I might want to consider Como. But um, that's a different topic. Um, but... Maggiore, I like it because it has those little islands. That kind of is what does it for me. Um, and also, yeah, like also similar to um, to Garda, you have the, the boats that you can take from one place to the other. But there's just something about the feeling in the air. Um, you have these huge, huge cliffed mountains that are all around and uh, some of the towns that you find along the lake also are very, very just laid back and relaxed. And uh, you have this kind of like old feeling of what you might think of maybe Italy in the 50s and the 80s and the 90s. Like those those movies that you watch that capture like that quintessential feeling of Italy where it's the small streets with the semi-tall buildings. Okay, but in Italy, a tall building in an old town, what we're talking about, maybe eight floors or something like that, with all these alleyways. And um, that was something that I really enjoyed, whereas in Garda, for example, just to compare and contrast, um, you have a lot smaller, shorter buildings, kind of like single-family homes out there. Um, but in, in, in Garda... Granted, you do have those as well, but you also have some of the, the larger towns where you have a bit more of that kind of feeling like you could be in, um, say, like like an old southern town. It, 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 I don't know quite how to describe it, but it's got a nice balanced feeling for me that I like. And um, also, it's a little bit out of the way. It's not quite on the same main travel paths as Como or even Garda, for example. That's kind of something that I also like, something that's off the beaten path. Granted, you can find that on Garda very easily. You just have to go a little bit further than Desenzano <laughs> or a little bit south of Riva, and you can find those. Um, so it's granted, it's also, it's been a long time since I've been there, but I could really see that if I were to move to a lake, that it might be the one that I would be interested in. But I do have to say, though, it would actually be a difficult choice that I would also actually be pulled towards Lago di Garda just because it is a wonderful, beautiful place. And in some ways, it almost feels more accessible, um, even though, like I just said, I might prefer uh, Lago Maggiore 
just because it is off the beaten path, like for example, needing to get onto a flight or needing to get a train or say, for example, you're going to meet friends that are coming to visit the country. When you're in Garda, for example, like if you're in Desenzan or anywhere on the southern part of the lake, you have those train lines that just can take you to a whole bunch of different places very quickly. They're on the high speed lines. And so it makes it very convenient in that way. So I am double minded, whether it's really, in fact, truly the best thing to be a little bit more out of the way, or if it actually is better to be on more of the main thoroughfare, if you could put it that way. <laughs> but you know, I think maybe this might be a great place to round this off and that we don't dive too deep into this one so that we uh, have plenty more to get into because, like I said, we have the, the, to the whole topic of even just to talk about seaside property or, or to live in a city or to live in the countryside. So let's save that for future episodes of this mini-series within this project of the Italian real estate podcast presented by italianrealestatelawyers.com but of course marco if anybody is interested in making their dream a reality and getting a home by maybe one of these gorgeous lakes that we've spoken about today how can they get in contact with you and your team people can contact us through our website italianrealestatelawyers.com or give us a call to numbers on the website absolutely fantastic and of course if you're interested in more content like this about living in Italy, purchasing in Italy, making Italy your reality, and, and finally having that piece of it for yourself, be sure that you are subscribed to this podcast. If you're subscribed on YouTube, of course, you get the automatic bonus of being subscribed to the Italian Citizenship Podcast that Marco and I also collaborate on. Uh, but if you're also subscribed to this as an audio-only podcast, be sure that you are subscribed because we will be coming out with these episodes and you don't want to miss the future episodes that we'll have to do within this mini series, like I was talking about before. But of course, if you're interested in more conversations about life abroad, living abroad, living abroad as an Italian dual citizen expat, life in Italy and life in other countries, be sure to come over to my personal YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Rafael Di Furia, or you can find my audio only podcast, Not Your Average Globetrotter, on your favorite podcasting player of choice. But Marco Permunian, Mr. Permunian, thank you so much for making yourself available again to talk about these topics. I'm Rafael Di Furia. Stay safe and healthy out there, and we will see you all next time. Later. Thank you.